In this video, I'm going to show you how you can successfully braze steel, iron, cast iron, galvanized metals, brass, and bronze using the method and materials outlined in this video. In previous videos, I showed you how you can braze aluminum successfully, what materials to use. I also showed you how you can solder sheet metal, galvanized sheet metal, and even some grades of stainless by making your own acid flux. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to successfully braze steel together in the event you don't have a welder available. Now, the materials that I use that I know for a fact work extremely well. So if you're going to want to duplicate the results that you're going to see in this video, then I suggest you buy the products that I have here. For this demonstration, I will be using Harris Stay Silve 6 brazing rods, which are a copper, phosphorus, silver alloy for both the steel and brass bronze demonstrations since I ran out of the Harris low fuming bronze 15 rods which I normally use for steel. And the brazing flux that I use is made by Hotmax. Now this one works extremely well. I have tried others that work good too, but to me this one works the best. And just like it says on the label, it does work very well on steel, malleable and cast iron, galvanized metals, brass and bronze. Now it's, it's a mixture of different chemicals. One of the chemicals inside is boric acid, the same exact chemical that is used for killing cockroaches, used as an eye wash, and also used in nuclear reactor cooling pools because it's a very good neutron absorber as well. Now I did try to use just boric acid by itself and it doesn't work so well. Now if you use borax, which is a laundry detergent booster which you can purchase in a supermarket, that works pretty good, but still nowhere near as good as you see with the Hot Max. The first thing I'm going to be doing is brazing the steel ring in the center to the steel plate on the outside. The steel ring in the center is approximately 330 seconds of an inch thick, a little under an eighth of an inch and the steel plate that it's going to be brazed onto is approximately a sixteenth of an inch thick. I'm going to be brazing on top of a damp piece of wood which works extremely well. I'm also going to be adding a piece of aluminum underneath the workpiece where the flame is going to be directed to prevent the wood from catching fire. You do not want to direct any heat directly to concrete otherwise you may have spalling. Spalling occurs when pieces of the surface of the concrete due to extreme heat and moisture in the concrete what happens you have pieces of that concrete popping up when those pieces pop off the surface of the concrete they could potentially hit you in the eye if you're not wearing safety goggles which you should be when you're doing this so be very careful do not do any of this directly on top of concrete before you solder something the surfaces must be extremely clean bright and shiny when you weld something, the surfaces do not have to be clean. Just as long as there's no loose flakes of rust, you're fine. When you braze something, you just want to make sure the surfaces are clean. They do not have to be bright and shiny like when you would go to solder something. As you can see, I sanded and wire brushed the area all around the pipe where I'm going to be applying the brazing rod to fill the area between the plate and the ring. For a piece this size that I'm working on, a regular propane torch will be just fine, but if you're working on a larger area or thicker metal, you're definitely going to want to use a map gas torch. Otherwise, the workpiece will not reach the right temperature to melt the brazing rod. The first thing I'm going to do is take the end of the brazing rod, the last inch and a half or two inches, heat it up, not to the point where it's going to melt, but just make it hot, and then I'm going to dip it into the hot max brazing flux. When you go to braze, make sure the majority of the flame is being directed at the thicker piece of metal. You're going to want to heat the metal until it's a very, very bright red orange. That's around the proper temperature where the brazing rod will start to melt. Remember, you want the metal to melt the brazing rod. You do not want the torch flame to melt the brazing rod. In this case, what I'm going to do, because there is a little bit of a space between the ring and the plate, even though the temperature is not hot enough, I'm going to allow the flame to melt a little bit of the brazing material between the ring and the plate. 
you're going to see as the temperature continues to rise on that ring and the plate next to it, embracing material is not going to be lumped up anymore and it's going to flow very nicely into the surface. color you see right here is ideal. Once you see the brazing material begin to flatten out into the surface like you see here, continue to heat a little bit longer before you pull away the torch. Now that I completed one side, I'm going to spin the plate around so I can weld the opposite side of the ring to the plate as well. This is extremely strong material. I'm not going to have to weld the entire perimeter of that ring. It would be totally unnecessary. So I'm going to be doing just the opposite sides. Like before, you're going to heat the end of the brazing rod, dip it in the flux, so it's all ready to go once the metals are hot enough. You do not want to speed up the cooling, just allow the metals to cool off. Once it's cooled off, then you could take a wire brush or a wire wheel to clean the areas that you just brazed. You can see how nice the job came out, and you can be assured that the connection between these two pieces of metal will be extremely strong.
and that is it. All right, this is the piece of brass. You get a good angle on so you can see. Right there, it's all flowed into the top nicely. And really can't try picking at it because the edges are too smooth going in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in the vise and start banging on this with a hammer to see if this area pops off. So as the metal starts to curl a little bit, this should not pop off. Let's take a look. Okay, let me try banging on it this way. That's curling out a little bit round. And I hit that pretty hard. That would have popped off. Let me do it again. Try more of the edge. Curling nicely. And you can see that fused extremely well. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment area, and I will do my best to answer your question in a timely manner. Also, make sure before posting that others are allowed to reply to your questions or comments.